Hi, oh, yeah, Jimmy here. How are you doing? If you haven't seen me before, I'm in the process of converting that ordinary panel van, a Citroen Relay, into a hopefully stealthy camper van. Well, I haven't been very well, so this is the first time I've been to the garage since I'd done the testing the diesel glow plugs video. And that was back in December. That video there. So, it's time to get back to doing something on the van. Now the van is partially converted inside. It's not finished. Um, and I will be getting back to that as soon as I can. But there's a job I need to do before that. Because this van has never been on the road since October 2019. And a consequence of that things not being used things tend to seize up and that's exactly what's happened disconnected all the cables and most of the cables underneath are fine but there is something seized and it's underneath the van so I'll take the camera under the van and I'll show you let the handbrake off and make sure they come free Right off. Well, that's how it's supposed to be. Nice and free. I'll just show you what it what I'm talking about. Now, the van is is up on uh, on the ramp, and the wheels off off the ground. And as you can see, the handbrake is off. Now it feels a bit twangy. What I used to say twangy when I used to have the garage. That's how I used to explain it to the customers. It's twangy, it's, it's very free and gets tight all of a sudden. So there's something not moving right. But you can see the handbrake is off. Now, I'll try and that. Oh, it's not, it didn't move at all before. And this one, that is far too tight. So, That's what we're going to tackle in this video. So what I'm going to do is, before I uh, start pulling the wheels off, and uh, check in. I'm gonna I'm gonna go underneath the van and have a bit poke around, pull and push a few things, and see if anything makes any difference. Which would be easier if I had an assistant to uh, operate the handbrake while I was underneath, but I haven't, so I'm gonna have to do it on my own. So I'll have a bit poke around and uh, and I'll come back to you. I've had a bit of poke around and and uh, although I haven't seen anything um, definitely to blame the wheels are slacking now that's just with me having a bit pulling poke around um, this one as well this one was even worse you see they're not so I don't think it's anything major I think we just need some maintenance so I'm gonna take them to bits check them lubricate them anywhere so next job is take the wheels off i'm just going to do something first um which i was going to do but i get carried away talking and i forget what i'm doing so what i'm going to do is, is to see how free the wheels were there now i'm just going to pull the handbrake on again um can you see it i'm going to pull the handbrake on again and let it off and check them again Got a pound of penny 
No, they're not. They're not that bad. Mate, the liar out of me. November, December last year, when I noticed the brakes were sticking, they were absolutely solid. There, that one's solid. They were absolutely solid and wouldn't move. But now they're making a liar out of me. Right, take the wheels off. Well, when you've got your wheel off, this is what you'll see. Well, this is what you'll see if you've got a Citroen reel here. And they are disc brakes. Well, the foot brake is disc brakes. The foot brake caliper is this, this bit here. You've got your pads inside. And the hand brake on this particular model, because there is another um, design which the handbrake is incorporated in the caliper, but on this one it's not. This one you've got little handbrake shoes inside here that run like that. So this bit here, this part of the, the disc, acts like a, a conventional drum brake. And um, so the little handbrake shoes are inside there. Now to get that off, you have to take the foot brake caliper off and the foot brake mounting bracket caliper mounting bracket off as well it's two nuts behind here and put that over the back take the pads out don't let the caliper hang on the um, flexi pipe because you could damage it then you need to take these two little um, locating uh, little location uh, pins for the wheel take take those out and about this about here there is a, um, an adjusting wheel for the handbrake shoes. Now what you have to do is get the, the hole lined up and it's very awkward and you need a, a light to try and put in and flick it round to make it loose. You'd be very lucky to get this off if you don't back the adjustment off a bit. And then this comes off. Now I've got the other side all stripped. I'll show you on the other side. Okay, this is the other side and... Uh, uh, this is going to be quite complicated to explain. I hope you understand what I'm what I'm pointing out. That is the, um, the foot brake caliper. Now I've got the pads taken out and there's a piston sticking out. Um, I can't hold the torch and point to it at the same time. There's a piston there. Comes out when you press the brake. And... Um, there's a, it's a floating caliber, what they call a floating caliber, so that um, it slides in the bracket. Now that is the bracket, and the caliper slides in there. If it didn't, and you only had one piston, you'd only break on one pad. So it's a compensation um, slider. Um, I don't know if you know what I mean. And it slides by these two two sliders now that one you have to make sure they are they are free now this one I can't move it but it's not dead free but I can move it but this one is really solid so that's got to be stripped and freed off which I'll do in the vice later on and all these uh, bits here have to be cleaned up because this is exactly how it came off it's all dirty and uh, the pads slide in, in those in those brackets. They must be clean. I'll show you it when I've cleaned it. Um, and this is the disc. Now the brake pads clamp on this part of the disc. Obviously both sides. And the handbrake runs inside here. Like I was talking. This is like a conventional drum. And there is your handbrake shoes. Now, because the handbrake is only applied when the vehicle is standing still, most people don't pull a handbrake on until the vehicle is stopped. So they very, very rarely wear down. And you can see there's plenty brake material left on them. In fact, all the years I've been a mechanic, which is, I don't know, 35, 40 years, I've never replaced a handbrake shoe because they don't wear down. Um, I tell a lie that I have, but it wasn't because they were worn down, it's because they were damaged. This is the handbrake cable, and it comes into this little bracket here. Now this is a bit like, it's a compensation 
device, same as the sliders on the uh, brake. If you didn't have that and you pulled it, you'd only brake on one shoe. So this is um, a compensation device. And this is actually what I thought was going to be seized. But it's absolutely free as a bird. You see it? It's absolutely dead free. Now, if that was seized, that would explain everything, but it's not. So, I'm going to clean all these bits up now and show you what they're supposed to look like. Because they're all a bit grubby at the minute. Uh, when I do that, I'll, um, I'll do a little bit of, same as this again, showing you the clean bits. Uh, but what I'm thinking at the minute is, there's nothing um, really, I haven't really found it, uh, a definite fault. I, th I think it's just um, the fact that it's all rusty. I think by the time I clean it all up and lubricate it, I think it's going to work fine. Now, what you've got to do before you put it all back together is to make sure that the cable isn't seized because it's possible that the cable could be seized. But um, I will check that before it uh, goes back. In fact, I might even take the cables off and lubricate them. I might as well do a, a complete overhaul on the brakes because the MOT is due. And um, you don't normally take the brakes down as far as this, actually. I would be surprised if most YouTube people want to tackle this job. But you don't always have to take it down as far as this. A good DIY I could could change the foot brake pads and make sure the sliders on the caliper is uh, free. And that's probably, it's unusual to get much more wrong with it. Anyway, I'll get on with this and clean the uh, these components and show you what they're supposed to look like. Right, we'll start with the caliper bracket. Now the things we wanna do is you can see that it's not as free as it should be, but it, it does move that one doesn't move at all it needs to be freed off so we're going to do that and that will allow the bracket to slide the, the caliper to slide in the bracket and these bits here you can see they're all dirt they need to be clean so the pads can slide in here so we'll get on doing that Okay, we've cleaned it. I hope you can tell the difference. You see the sliders are all very clean. We're going to put uh, copper slip grease in there before we reassemble it. But just to show you how clean it is, I haven't put it in now. The two um, slider pistons, you can see now moving. Now, this, uh, this one shouldn't be as free as this one. I'll just take this one out and show you why. This one has just got a metal shaft and goes into there. Now put copper slip onto it and this one slides in really, really easy. Move it with your fingers. This one has got a, um, a rubber sleeve on this part. So don't um, damage that when you're cleaning it. And the rubber sleeve is to give it a bit of resistance. So that one is absolutely free as a bird. This one is much better than it was before, but it doesn't it doesn't slide anywhere near as as easy as that one. But it's not meant to. That's free now, so be careful with that one. Um, actually, I didn't know that. I didn't know that one of them had a, a rubber sleeve on. So one of them, I don't know which, whether it's the top or the bottom. Um, but if you do take them apart, you'll see one of them's got that on. I've also cleaned the um, the brake pads up here. Now, don't mix the pads up because um, they have to go to the same side as you took them out. When you've got a floating caliber which only has one piston, there's normally a mark. You can see the mark on the back of the pad where the piston's been hitting. So that's how you can tell even after you've cleaned it. And... Um, when you've cleaned everything up, I always try the pads into the um, the brackets so that you can see that um, the slide and that one as well. 
Um, try not to touch the brake material of the pads if you can. They haven't got to have any grease or anything on them. And be aware that sometimes there's a um, there's a shim on the back of them, so don't lose the shim. That shim goes onto there. It'll be held in place when we put the copper slip on. So yeah, that's it. So that's ready to go back. But what, as I say, we're going to put copper slip on the sliding bits before we do that. But we move on to something else. Okay, next we'll do the disc. And when you, uh, if you're going to clamp the disc in the vice like I have, don't uh, grip onto the brake surface straight onto the vice. Put some cardboard or something in so you won't mark it. Now, I don't know, can you see the inside? It's, it's, uh, it's all dirty. Now what we want here is we want all the flaky bits taken off and all the brake surfaces to be free of corrosion and, um, and clean. Now you might see um, there might be a bit of a lip on here. If there is, I don't know, we'll see what it's like when it's clean though. If there's too much of a lip on there when uh, it's finished, you can get a little around um, grindstone and put it in your drill and go around. But try, if you're going to do that, try and only get the edge, not the brake surface. But we'll come back and see what it's like when we've cleaned it. Well, there we go. You're never going to get it like, like a new one, but uh, that's much better than it was. And I don't know if you noticed that I've got all the the flaky rusty bits out of this bit around here anything that can uh, can flake off and drop into the brakes so that's that's that done that's that's it's as good as we need now that's the little adjuster that is inside the drum um, very hard to see I'll try and show you it better later on but you flick this wheel around with the uh, screwdriver through the the bolt holes and it adjusts the brakes up so you really want this to be free now this is ultra free it's uh, everything I found up to now hasn't been too bad this is really free um, now what I always do is when you clean I'm going to copper grease it and make it uh, future proof so it doesn't seize up in the future um, but a little tip make a mental note of which way that is this is the right hand thread because sometimes they're left hand threads and when you're struggling to adjust this through the little uh, stud hole you might be turning it the wrong way so if you can remember whether it's a right hand thread or a left hand thread you should uh, you should be able to adjust it all right. So I'm just gonna clean that up and lubricate that. The handbrake shoes a bit of a clean. Um, they, don't, um, they don't need much. And the, uh, you'll notice they've got loads of brake material left on. They're nearly brand new. Because they're never used because the vehicle's always stopped when you pull your handbrake on. Well, they're all, the components are cleaned and ready to be reassembled but I don't want to start building it back up until I've checked the piston in the foot brake caliper and check the handbrake cable is free now both of those jobs much much easier with an assistant unfortunately my neighbor isn't in I called in and he wasn't in so I can't do that today so everything's ready for the next time I come in. Well, it's the next day now and I managed to get some help from my neighbour this morning who came along to give me a bit of a hand. And we've got something to report. I found something. I found the cause. But firstly, we checked the, um, the brake cylinder, the piston and the brake cylinder. That was fine. And we've disconnected all the cables and most of the cables underneath are fine but there is something seized and it's underneath the van so I'll take the camera under the van and I'll show you 
Okay, this is the rear part of the handbrake system. These two cables here go to the rear wheels. That one goes to the uh, off side, which is the one I've got stripped down. That one goes to the near side, which we haven't started yet. So I haven't checked this cable properly, but that cable is, uh, is fine. It uh, is very free. So I'm gonna clean that up and grease it before I put it back for good. This metal rod that you can see goes to the uh, the front, that thing there, and there's another cable runs from the lever to that. And that seems to be okay as well. So what I've found is that the uh, compensator, or I'm calling the compensator, that's probably the wrong word, this swivel, is, it, it's getting free now because I've moved it a few times. When I f originally checked it, I could hardly move it. So that is what's causing the problem. It swivels from inside, he inside here and that's seized. There's a return spring on. So when you leave go of that, the spring should pull it back to the stop like that, like that, and it's not. So I could spray some WD-40 in and just work it in place but I want to do it properly, so I'm going to take it. I want to take it off, and I want to um, free it off in the vise. So I'll show you that in a second. Right, it's much easier to see it in the vise, and much easier to free it off in the vise. Now this hook on here is where the cable from the handbrake lever inside the van goes to, and that's where the rod goes goes to goes to the back yoke, which pulls the two cables to each wheel. When you pull the handbrake on, it pulls that on like that. And when you let it off, that return spring should return that lever back down there. And as you can see, it's not doing that. Now that's why the handbrake cable, I don't know if you can remember at the beginning, I said the handbrake cable felt twangy. And what happens is when you pull the cable on, it's, it's okay. When you let the handbrake cable off, instead of this returning, the cable was bulging which meant the cable felt twangy. That's, I don't know if I'm explaining that very well, but that's the, that's why it was twangy. And I'll show you this when it's freed off. I'm gonna take that nut off and take it a bit, grease inside, clean it and grease it, and you'll see the difference. All right, I've taken the nut off, and even taking the nut off, you can see how much more free it is. If I take the return spring off and Take that off. You see, um, where is it? You can see how corroded that, that is. Now, I'm just going to free, clean that all up and copper slip it, and you'll see the difference like chalk and cheese. Okay, I've cleaned it all up. Uh, You'll probably see how clean it is now and I'm just going to put some um, copper slip around there. You could have, uh, as I said before, you could have done this with it in place with some penetrating oils, WD-40, something like that. But it wouldn't have been such a good job and hopefully this now will last another 10 years. It shouldn't, uh, now that it's packed with grease it shouldn't. I shouldn't seize up again and that goes on there I'll work it in and put the return spring back on and that is what it should be like I just uh, put the nut back on And there. Absolutely free as a bird. Compare that to what it was like when we took it off. So, I'm pretty safe in saying that um, that was our problem. But we'll overhaul the brakes anyway because uh, 
it's good for the brakes on his dual MOT. And that's it back fitted onto the van and absolutely free as a bird. Um, the cables are going to be greased. Well, everything's going to be greased actually again. When it's uh, completely finished, I'll go over it again. And uh, for all of you eagle eyed mechanics out there that are thinking that copper slip was very watery that I uh, I put onto the the swivel when it was in the vise. That's my own recipe. That's uh, copper slip with a little bit of engine oil. And I mix it up and put it on with a paintbrush. And uh, I've been doing that for years. And it's uh, it works really well. Okay, I'm just giving you a quick look at this before we put the disc back on. We've now got the handbrake shoes assembled and refitted. The next step now is to put the disc on and rebuild the foot brake. But before you do that, you have to adjust the handbrake shoes. And you would do that by this wheel here, which is, as I said before, it's handy to know whether it's a right-hand or a left-handed thread. This is a right-handed thread. So what you have to do is, it has to be adjusted with the disc in place and you push a thin screwdriver through the hole in the disc where the um, one of these holes and you have to flick it round with a screwdriver so you need to know and it's it, it, easier said than done it's, it's a, a very awkward job to do so you need to know whether that's a right hand thread or left hand thread this is a right hand thread so if you click the wheel that way, rear to front, that is tightening it, and front to rear would be loosening it off. Right, I'm going to attempt to show you on camera how to adjust the handbrake shoes. Now, as I said, it's easier said than done. It's a pretty awkward job, but we'll try. Um, I'm going to use my new... Um, inspection light I just bought it this morning it's really good really bright so what we have to do is we know that the adjuster is about that about there so you have to shine this light through so you can see the wheel that I pointed out before and I just see it there now and you can see the disc moves um, and what we want to do is we want to lock lock the disc up so if we put that in and click that round, there, that's uh, it's really tight. Now we want to centralise the handbrake shoes. So we just give a little tap, tap, that's just to centralise the shoes inside the drum. And you see it, there, you see it slapping it off a little bit more. So we'll just take that up a touch more. There we go, and there. Now we just want to back the adjustment off a little bit. So we were going rear to front to tighten, then we go front to rear to loosen it off. So it's not very easy to see. It's a bit still a touch tight you can hear it uh, when it stops so a little touch more a little touch more there you go in fact I'm going to take that a little touch further back as well I prefer them to be on the loose side so they don't get hot on a long journey. There, that's better. There you go. So that's that's your handbrake shoes adjusted. Now you do this, it's better to do this with the uh, foot brake caliper off, or if you're doing it with the foot caliper on, push the pads back so they don't affect the friction on the, on the disc. And you wanna do it with the handbrake cable adjustment 
knocked back as well because the cable could be pulling the shoes onto the drum so you don't want that you do this first then adjust the cable and that went really well right it's all built up now I'm just going to quickly show you how the caliper slides why it's called a fully floating caliper it might be easier than my explaining when it was on the uh, the bench you see this the sliders that we had on the bench I don't, I don't know can you see them moving now of course you're only able to do that because the pads are pushed back once the pads are pumped up you wouldn't be able to do that with your hand well, you wouldn't be able to do that with a screwdriver either. Um, as I say, that's only because the pads are pushed back at the minute. And um, don't forget, as soon as you've done your brakes, if you've been doing brake pads, front or rear, any sort of pads where you've had the pistons pushed back, you must pump the foot brake pedal um, because the first uh, probably half a dozen presses you won't have any brakes so if you just jump in and drive off the first time you go to use your brakes you won't have any brakes so pump the brakes up as soon as you're finished working on the on the calipers well that's this side finished um, the handbrake cable isn't adjusted up properly yet because I still need to do the other the other side wheel um, I'm just going to do exactly what I've done on this side, so I'm not going to film it. But what I will do, I will show you the finished job with the wheels back on. When I pull the handbrake on, show you that the wheels are locked up and let the handbrake off and show you that the wheels are free. Well, I'm just having a well-earned tea break. All the brakes are finished. Um, We've adjusted them, we've adjusted the handbrake cables, we've copper slipped them to prevent um, seizing up in the future, well, for as long as we can. And uh, wheels are on, and just got to show you the finished job, so you can compare it with what it was like at the beginning of, your, of the video. Do that now. Right, can you remember what they were like at the beginning? There's a handbrake cable, oh, handbrake cable, handbrake lever, and it's feeling really nice now, and it's not twangy anymore. Yeah, that feels really nice. So, well, what we'll do is we'll pull the handbrake on, and you see, I didn't pull it on that hard. I wasn't riving at it. I'm just pull the handbrake on, and check the wheels. My hands in the way. Come on. Yeah. That's solid. It's not going to move at all. And we'll try the other side. Again. That's not going to move. So, let the handbrake off. And make sure they come free. it off well wow, that's how it's supposed to be nice and free and again that's really free lovely jubbly well, what a difference. They're really good now. Um, I think you should check your brakes at least once a year. And definitely if you're doing higher mileage. Um, not necessarily stripping them down as much as I did in this video. Not the handbrake shoes and things like that, but the, the brake pads and uh, front and rear. The front is actually much easier than the back. There's no handbrake on the front. So the foot brake part of the job I've just filmed, 
that's pretty much what your front brakes are. So they're not they're not that bad to do at all. So front and rear brakes, because um, there's a lot of reasons for keeping on top of your brakes. Firstly, and probably most importantly, safety. Um, if you're driving around with iffy brakes, it's an accident waiting to happen. So you know, if you've got your family in, just don't do it. Reliability. Uh, I hate vehicles that you can't rely on, that you're frightened to do a long journey in. I like to jump in mine and, and, and go anywhere. Um, and it's cost effective to do your brakes because if you've got seized brakes and they're sticking on, you're wearing them away as you're driving. So your brakes will last a lot longer if you keep on top of them. And don't forget, fuel economy, uh, you'd find a big difference in fuel economy because if you're driving around with your brakes sticking on, uh, the engines haven't worked much harder to drive the vehicle. So uh, yeah, keep on top of, top of your vehicle. So now, getting back to the camper van conversion stuff, which I enjoy much more than the, me the mechanical um, maintenance parts. Gonna be getting back to that, so um, hope to see you then. And uh, you take care and thank you for watching.